Hi, welcome to the class. In the previous chapter, we have been learning that the Earth is not exactly spherical. It's slightly flattened at the north and south poles and bulged at the middle. In today's chapter, we'll be learning about globe, latitudes and longitudes. What is globe? It's a true model or miniature form of the Earth. It's used to get a broad level picture of the world. Countries and continents are drawn on it. A needle is fixed through the globe in a tilted manner and it's called axis. Remember, this is an imaginary line. The real Earth doesn't have it. The globe or Earth spins around or uh, rotates around the axis. The two points on the globe through which the needle passes are two poles. North Pole and South Pole. North Pole at the top and South Pole at the bottom. Another imaginary circular line cuts us into two halves. That's halfway from the North Pole and halfway from the South Pole. This line is called Equator. The Northern half is known as Northern Hemisphere and the Southern half is known as Southern Hemisphere. Equator is an important reference point to locate places on Earth. All parallel circles from the equator to the poles up and down are known as parallels of latitudes. Latitudes are measured in degrees. All parallels to the north of equator is known as north latitudes and to the south are known as south latitudes. Now at the northern hemisphere the latitudes are denoted by the letter N under the south by the letter S. For example, if you want to locate a place here in this latitude, you can say it's at 20 degree south latitude. Now the equator represents zero degree latitude or it's a base latitude which is at zero degree. 90 degree north of the equator marks the north pole and 90 degrees south of equator marks the south pole. Now, important parallels of latitudes. We've already said the equator is at 0 degree or it's a baseline. The north pole at 90 degree and south pole at 90 degree from the equator. These are important parallels of latitudes. Besides these, there are other four important parallels of latitudes that we need to learn in depth. Coming to the Northern Hemisphere, we have Tropic of Cancer at 23.5 degree north. Coming to the Southern Hemisphere, we have Tropic of Capricorn at 23.5 degree south. Again, back to the Northern Hemisphere at 66.5 degree north, we have Arctic Circle and at the 66 and half degree south in the Southern Hemisphere, we have Antarctic Circle. We know Earth is geoid in shape. So different parts of the Earth gets heated differently. Based on the heat received from the Sun, the Earth has various heat zones. It has mainly three heat zones. The first one is Torrid Zone. The midday sun is exactly overhead at least once a year on all latitudes between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. That means consider the sun here and the sun rays fall exactly on this region. That means vertically on this region. Therefore, this area between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn receives the maximum heat and it's known as Torrid Zone. Next is Temperate Zone. The midday sun never shines overhead between the region of Tropic of Cancer and Arctic Circle in the Northern Hemisphere and between the Tropic of Capricorn and Antarctic Circle in the Southern Hemisphere. That means consider again the sun here and the sun rays, the slanting sun rays goes on decreasing towards the poles. Therefore the area bounded by the Arctic Circle and Tropic of Cancer and in the Southern Hemisphere, Tropic of Capricorn and Antarctic Circle receives moderate temperature. So this 
area these zones these two zones are together called temperate zones coming to the third heat zone frigid zone these two areas the between the north pole and arctic circle in the northern hemisphere and the south pole and antarctic circle uh, in the southern hemisphere experience very cold it's because the slanting sun rays provide very less heat so these two areas are known as frigid zone it is very cold now we have understood about latitudes what are longitudes these are again imaginary lines drawn on the globe or around the earth from north pole to the south pole vertically these lines are called meridians of longitudes these are semicircles and the distance between them is measured in degrees each degree is further divided into minutes and each minute is further divided into seconds we've already said the distance between these lines decreases towards the pole and it becomes zero at the point at the poles where all these meridians meet we've already said that the meridians are semicircles so the meridians have equal length hence it was difficult to count the number of meridians we can have any number of longitudes or meridians of longitude around the earth so countries had to choose a line as zero degree or as a base meridian just as we have seen uh, the zero degree equator all countries decided on the meridian that passed through or that passes through the greenwich in london and this meridian is called the prime meridian why did the countries choose greenwich as the prime meridian do a self research and try to get the answer if you don't get the answer ask me in the comment box okay coming back to the prime meridian its value as we said is um, zero degree longitude from this meridian we count 180 degree eastward and 180 degree westward thus the prime meridian and 180 degree meridian divide the earth into two halves known as eastern hemisphere at the east and western hemisphere at the west remember the 180 degree meridian at the east and uh, 180 degree meridian at the west are on the same line here the longitude of a place is indicated by the letter e for east longitudes and w for west longitudes just to recall latitudes are circular lines and longitudes are vertical lines now we can look at a place on globe very easily we know now the latitudes and longitudes are geographical tools to locate a place on the globe or on the earth uh, be it a city village a town whatever to understand how to do it just follow these instructions draw on a paper equidistant horizontal and vertical lines and label the vertical lines one two three four and label the horizontal lines with capital letters a b c d e then draw random circles where the horizontal and vertical lines meet give them the names a b c d e in small letter now consider the horizontal lines as northern latitude and vertical lines as eastern longitude now coming to the this point of the circle a can you locate this place or locate this point we can say it is b degree north latitude and one degree east longitude now try to locate these other circles too now very important concept longitude and time time is measured by the movement of earth moon and planets we know this when prime meridian of greenwich has the sun at the highest point in the sky all places along the meridian will have noon we know the earth rotates from west to east so as it rotates from west to east all the meridians or all the places that is at the east of this prime meridian will be ahead of greenwich time and those to the west will be behind it how do we calculate the rate of difference see the earth rotates 360 degree in about 24 hours that means 15 degree in one hour or one degree in four minutes 
So you can understand this way the earth takes 4 minutes to rotate 1 degree or the earth takes 1 hour to rotate 15 degree. We know the earth has been divided into 24 time zones of 1 hour each. Each zone thus covers 15 degree of longitude. The gap between two longitudes here, two time zones is 15 degree. So when it is 12 noon in Greenwich, the time at 15 degree east of the prime meridian, all the places along this meridian will be 15 into 4 that is 60 minutes ahead of the Greenwich time. We've already said to rotate 1 degree the earth takes 4 minutes. So to rotate 15 degree the earth takes 15 into 4 is equal to 60 minutes. So at this place or this meridian the time will be 60 minutes ahead of Greenwich time that is 12 pm plus 60 minutes or 1 hour is equal to 1 pm so at this meridian at uh, 15 degree east the time will be 1 pm so what about west west it will be the same way 60 minutes behind it so it will be just 11 o'clock am here similarly when it is noon 12 pm in the greenwich time 180 east and 180 west degree meridian will have 12 am midnight then why do we have a standard time? The local time of places which are on different meridians may vary. We know different countries can have various meridians passing through them. So a country can set a standard time for the country as local time. In India 82 and half degree east or 82 degree and 30 minutes east is treated as the standard meridian. The local time at this meridian is taken as standard time for the whole country. It's known as IST or Indian Standard Time. Now see, India is located east of Greenwich at 82 and a half degree east. So can you calculate by how much time we are ahead of Greenwich time? We said to rotate 1 degree the earth takes 4 minutes. So to rotate 82 and a half degree the earth takes 82 and a half multiplied by 4 is equal to 330 minutes that is 5 hours and 30 minutes that is ahead of Greenwich time so we are 5 hours and 30 minutes ahead of Greenwich time so if it is 10 o'clock in Greenwich time the time in India will be 10 plus 5 hours and 30 minutes 330 pm see we are 5 and a half hours ahead of Greenwich time Please note some countries like Russia have more than one standard time, okay? So the important thing that you have to remember is when a Greenwich time is given to you, remember to add five and a half hours with it and you will get the local time of India. This is a very simple question. Try to read it and understand the question. Try to get the answer. If you get the answer, please let me know in the comment box. We've been learning about globe, latitude, longitude and concept of time. Thank you.